Hello, it's Victoria from Coastal Themes and I am back with another video. So in today's video I'm going to be tackling something which I have personally had to make on a client website in the past week and something that I thought I could quickly put together with kind of variants and components and you've seen the title of this video and that is a multi-step form on Framer. So there are a few tutorials out there where you can just go into your assets, create a new component, and then you create different steps that show the different form fields, and you show and hide different fields as you add each variant. And then at the end, you show the whole form, and then you have a submit button. So that is a way to do it, and I will link the tutorial which I saw, and you can go watch that if that is the way you want to do it. But we have something on Framer which I've done a video on, which is a Framer Workshop, and that allows us to use the power of AI. And I've done this the other day. I will actually show you the example. I made this the other day, and this is all AI. I just kind of styled it up the way I wanted to using the AI chat for Framer Workshop. And it's got multiple steps. It's got a progress bar, and then at the end it actually goes to a Google Sheet, which is where I wanted to collect this, and it's probably the easiest way to gather uh, form responses um, without having to kind of use other third parties. You could use things like Zapier if you wanted to go down those routes and start using webhooks and all those all those funky things, but I've done something that I could technically do quite quickly, and that was easy, and the client was happy that all their form... Uh, re uh, all their form responses went to a Google Sheet. So jumping back into our lovely surf site, which you might have seen many, many times before, we are still using this beautiful site. I'm actually just going to make an empty page. <laughs> so we're going to open a Framer Workshop, and that is Command K. I'm on a Mac. Or you can search, and you can search Workshop, and that will open. So as always, if you've watched my previous video on exploring Framer Workshop, there's a few things which Workshop is great for, which I think are like calculators, forms, very specific things look like this, like scroll progress, animated clock, like very simple things. I tried to go down a route of building complex overlaying blocks and so on, and I just couldn't get it to do what I wanted to. And I sometimes use ChatGPT <laughs> to write me prompts that are succinct enough to put into Framer Workshop so I know that I'm, I'm being as straightforward and clear as I possibly can. But the great thing with Framer Workshop is that if I go into this form, everything you create has a code file. So my multi-step form has a code file. So I can copy this. I can go into ChatGPT because I have a premium ChatGPT. I don't have any other AI subscriptions at the moment, but I can copy this into GPT and I can tell, tell, get it to tell me what's wrong and what prompt I should give back to Framer in order to give me the right thing without having to change the code manually because I think there's, there's a lot of errors that can, can happen there. So I am going to ask it to create me a multi-step form. So I'm actually going to use the same prompt which I used for that previous form. And a lot of these won't be relevant, but I just want to show you a multi-step form. This has dynamic fields, so if something is checkboxed, then a specific field will appear. So I'm going to read you through this, and feel free to skip this part if it's not what you're looking for. So build a multi-step custom form in Framer using native form components. Variants for steps and interactions for navigation. The form should have client-side validation, conditional logic, and that is what I mean by you check a box and a field appears, and Google Sheets submission. So I'm going to make this more specific because I'm going to be using SheetMonkey. This is a free service. They do have paid plans, but you can skip through them. You're allowed 100 submissions and I believe five forms. And you can basically link this to your Google and create a form, and that will that will be where you're your sheet goes but you need this kind of middle integration so I'm going to specify sheet monkey and then include the following specs so now I've got all the different forms and fields that I need the types of inputs they are the drop downs like I need country codes I need nationalities with countries and then there's all these other things I've got this is all to do with mortgage and debt and things like that so then I have a final page which is a 
kind of agreeing to terms and conditions. And then I've got these for recapture. I'm going to remove this for now. I'm going to remove... No, and then it's also got a success screen after I click the button to submit. And the last thing I want to say is that it's important that you're using Claude 4 because Claude 4 is advanced, like it says, but I've only had success with this when I put it through GBT or Claude 3.7, I have had it correcting its errors for many, many minutes. So chuck it into Claude 4 and let's see what it comes up with. Okay, so ooh, it's added a few things I didn't expect. UI wise, it's looking pretty much like the previous form I made, which is great news. Um, it's asked me for my Sheet Monkey. API, which I will paste in now, and then we can test if that works. And then how did Google, Google Analytics event tracking? I mean, happy with that. It's got nowhere to link it. It's given me no field. So it's not really important. It's not what I wanted, but we have this. So if I preview this, okay, I've got some conditional fields, so I've got city, Cape Town, Lisbon, or other. When I click other, I can specify cities. Property type, house, do I currently own this property? If no, then I can put in the purchase price and the address. If yes, I can put in the current value of the house and any debt. And then next is the last step. You can see this progress bar is functioning. Yes, I understand the basics. and yes i agree to the terms and conditions so i've got these these don't link to anything so we can add those links in and then submit okay so submission is failing because i haven't pasted in my sheet monkey api so i'm going to open this i've got this blank sheet i'm going to link a new form for you let me delete this delete the old form because in a free account you can only have one form that is correct so new form I can do a blank sheet or you can pick an existing Google Sheet. So I'm actually going to do that. I will connect it to the Sheet Monkey form. Hit save. And here is this API link. And then we will paste it here. So now if I preview this, let's publish this. We'll, we'll publish it, we'll open the site and we'll go from there. So we are looking at the site. Now you will notice also that these drop downs have defaulted to the Mac OS, the native drop downs. You can override these. So there is a prompt that you can put in to override these. But like all the functionality is almost perfect. Okay, so submitted and we have a success state. If I click return to home, it's taking me back to my home page, which is cool. I'm happy with that. So now if I open that form, sheet monkey form, that is an old one. This should be the new one. Yes, yeah, so I've got this here, so I can see I've got the headings, country code, nationality, everything up until have has they have they agreed to the terms and have they understand the basics. So plus the timestamp, so I might want to move that field to the front, but everything is there, which is exactly what I wanted. So that is using Sheet Monkey. So this is the field that you copy, and Framer has given me this in my kind of variables. So what you could do is if it hasn't given you this, you can just prompt it and say, please link it to this form on Sheet Monkey, and it will hopefully all work. To make sure that the drop downs stay the way I've styled them, I've got this prompt. Make sure drop downs must override native browser defaults. Appearance is none. So let's see if that works, and we will pre publish it and see. But what it has done is given me all kind of colors and border radius and body fonts, heading fonts and button fonts all toggleable from here. So if I want this button to be pink, 
and the progress bar to be pink, I can just change my primary colour. Text colour is black and I can change that to be white. Let's say I'm working on, on a black background or a dark background. Um, border colour, I can also change. And then if you want to kind of fully change the styling or anything like that, you can control that just by prompting. So if you just wanted underlines, you could say remove all the borders and just have a border of one pixel at the bottom of each form field and that should probably do it. So let's see if this has worked. I feel like it might not have. Okay. So it's done it for not all of them. Refresh again. No. Okay, style of all, it's all selected elements to override the native browser drop down style. So let's publish this, see if it's worked. And then we'll look at responsivity and things like that. There we go, success. So we have drop downs, they are styled perfectly. And then you can see error states and so on. So let's take a look at tablet and mobile. So mobile, we can make the width fill. So actually I'm pretty happy with the, with the responsiveness. The only thing you might find is that if you have another breakpoint that's like extra large desktop or whatever you want to call it, make it 2000 pixels or something, the the actual form has a max width. So we can change the max width. If you wanted it massive, we could change the max width to 1600 pixels and let's see if it's if it follows what I say. But there's things that you might want to adjust like padding and margins and so on. And that you can just simply prompt. See, look, so now I have a 1600 pixels max width. And I mean, it looks a bit odd. I wouldn't, I don't recommend it from a UI best practice perspective, the button's so far away, but you can adjust the max width, remove all the padding on the component. So this could kind of get me into trouble. If I say remove all the padding, hopefully it won't remove the spacing between the form fields, but let's see what it does if I removed all the padding. Okay, no, it listened to me. So it removed the padding from the main container, which is, I'm glad it has more of a brain than I do when I prompt. Um, so now I could put this into my own container. So let me click on this, go to layers, and I could add a stack and then make this fill the stack. And then I personally could add the padding instead. So if I want this to have 48 pixels, so now this has 48 pixels. So on mobile, I might make it 24. On extra large, I might make it 64. And I can start controlling this and things like that. I would start simple and then slowly add on. And then you can always say, undo the last step. And it will just revert it to, instead of version seven, it will go back to version six. Yeah, that is how you make your multi-step form and link it to SheetMonkey to populate a Google Sheet. If you want it to link to email, then you can simply change the prompt. Say you wanted to send it to email and you just populate the email and it should function in a similar way to the native forms. So this is really great if you have dynamic and conditional kind of inputs that you want on your form. You don't want to faff about with different variants of a component and you just want it to be easy. This is probably your best route yet. If you have any questions, if you've done this a different way, maybe you can do this natively on Framer and I've completely missed it. But I think this has been the quickest and easiest way I've done it so far. And with that, I will see you in the next video. Bye.